welcome back, Intro to Drawing. Um, so today we're going to try to start drawing our rooms. Uh, this is usually an optional project, but as long as you're all in your rooms, there's probably nothing better that I can think of for you to draw right now. So we're going to do this project, and then we're going to move on in the curriculum. Um, so the first step is to think about which wall you're looking at. Um, I'm going to show you the wall I'm looking at. So there it is. I've measured it. There's a bunch of stuff on the bed because this is my office. And What you're going to do is decide which wall you're facing and remember how big that wall is, or measure it. And then you're going to draw that wall um, in the near the middle of your paper. Um, I'm going to ask that you find a place in your room where you can be roughly centered in front of that wall. So if we imagine that we are looking down on your room, this is, remember, the plan of your room. In my case, I have a big bed in the corner, and I've got this little bookcase and my desk, which you can't see in this drawing, is over here, and I'm sitting here, and I'm facing this way. Um, it's important that you be roughly centered for this drawing. We don't want to be like all the way up against this wall or all the way up against this wall, because then you won't be able to draw the things that are on those walls very well. So. Think about where you're sitting, where it's comfortable to sit, what you can see in front of you, and which way you're facing. And make sure you have measured this wall. In my case, I measured it to a nine foot square. So it was nine feet going this way, and my ceilings are also nine feet. So what I'm going to do is not quite center the wall on my paper. I'm going to put it slightly closer to the top of my paper. And that requires a little bit of math. So this paper, as you may remember, is 12 inches, right? So the middle is 6. And my wall, I'm going to use a scale, and I want you to use a scale of a half inch to a foot. So my wall is going to be very small. It's going to be four and a half inches square. Four and a half, four and a half. And I want it to be a little closer to the top of my paper than the bottom. There's only one reason for that, and that's because uh, I have more stuff on my floor than I have on my ceiling, as is probably the case with you. So we've got 12 going this way, 12 minus 4.5 is 7.5. And so instead of splitting seven and a half evenly, I think I'm going to put uh, four inches on the bottom and three and a half inches on the top. If your wall, if your ceiling is eight feet tall, your paper is 12, your ceiling is which is 
going to be 4 inches. So 12 minus 4 is 8. So you're going to have left 8 left over. So you could put 5 inches at the bottom and 3 inches on the top if you want. That makes 8 plus 4 makes 12. That wasn't so hard, was it? So most of you do have 8-foot ceilings. Leave 5 at the bottom, 3 at the top. Um, if you have a 9-foot ceiling, you're going to do what I did and leave 4.5 inches at the bottom, 3.5 at the top. And if your ceiling is uh, a different size than that, just uh, work it out for yourself. So I'm going to put measure 4 inches from the bottom of my paper to here. And then a 4.5 makes 8.5. And this is where my floor is going to go. Across here like this, but let me adjust my paper so it's angled the same way as this very crooked board I'm using. Wow. I really hope I didn't cut all the boards crooked. But I have a feeling I probably did. Okay, that's better. So, I'm going to put, that's where the ceiling's going to go. Here's where the floor is going to go. And now I'm going to measure nine inches. That's the center of my paper right here and then I'm going to go two and a quarter on either side of that to make my corners and that should make four and a half Okay, that's a very small wall. These are going to be small drawings. We usually use bigger paper at school, but if you have a piece of big paper and a big T-square and all that, um, you could do this at a different scale, like one inch to a foot. But on this paper, just to be sure everybody has room, we're going to do these small drawings, and that'll be fine. Uh, now we're going to grid this by inches, I'm sorry, by half inches. So we're going to have units on here. So we're going to go by half inches up, half inch, half inch, and that should give me my nine units going up, my nine feet. Be sure to zero yourself out on the floor. And then we're going to go by half inches the other way. And then we're going to very, very lightly grid that wall. And can you even see these lines? So we want these lines to be very faint. I'm making them a little darker as usual than I want you to make them so that you can do less erasing later, which is always our object. And then we're going to go across. And very faintly until we have gridded this entire wall.
Okay, so understand this is a drawing just of that wall and the scale. We didn't start like we did in the last drawings by creating a scale along the bottom edge of the paper. Uh, we are starting in a different slice. We're starting way back here um, on the back wall, which is a much more useful way to begin a drawing of basically the inside of a box, which is what a room is. Now we're going to try to determine with as much accuracy as we can just how far we are from the ground wherever we're sitting. And that means figuring out what our eye level is. So you can actually use a tape measure for that. And I can see if I measure my, my, my eye level in this chair is just about 48 inches, 4 feet. And I can also measure how far I am from the wall to my left. And I am about 4.5 feet. So that means I should be about four and a half feet from the wall on the other side, which I am. So that means I know where my vanishing point is going to be in this space based on where I'm sitting. And I'm going to count over four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. And then I'm going to count straight up four. One, two, three, four. And this point on the wall is directly across from where I'm sitting. Does that make sense? So that means I can use that point to start creating orthogonals. My orthogonals are going to go, always go to the vanishing point, and they're going to go through the corners of the room, and they're going to come down towards me, like that. I'm going to start with the four corners of the room, and you should be pretty good at making orthogonals by now. And now I'm going to go nuts and grid the floor and the walls. Seems like a lot of extra work, but um, it's going to make the next steps much easier. So the gridding, again, we're going to do much lighter than the corners. Fast forward through this if you want, or you can just let it run as you do yours and glance up every once in a while. You're going to have a huge advantage in this project because you're already home. So normally we draw these room drawings at school, and we have to use photographic and other references, but you get to do it on site, which is going to be a lot easier in some ways. And you see what I'm doing? I'm still putting my pencil down on the vanishing point, pivoting the ruler, and then very lightly drawing away from the vanishing point, beginning at each one of these intersections, where my grid marks coincide with the straight edge that I'm using.
reason we don't have to grid the ceiling is very simple. It's the same reason we draw less of the ceiling than we do of the floor. And that's because most of us don't really have stuff on the ceiling. Because we're starting with this tiny scale, half inch to a foot, you're going to notice that the room may already be starting to seem way too long. Like this, this distance from here to here seems like it could be really a huge distance much bigger than the way it, what than the part of the room that I can see from where I'm sitting so the question we have before us is a question of foreshortening um, if I use my tape measure I can see that there is about 12 feet between where I'm sitting and the wall over there that I'm drawing however 12 feet in this drawing is going to be very foreshortened because it's going away from me um, obviously if I use 12 of these units, um, I'd be going off my page, and that wouldn't look right at all. And the way we determine any kind of foreshortened distance is to uh, measure. And the way we measure is with, um, usually with a pencil. So what I'm going to do is extend my arm all the way out, look at that wall, and I'm going to use my close one eye, and I'm going to use my pencil as my measuring unit. With my arm fully outstretched, I'm going to see how many pencils tall my wall is. And to show you what I'm seeing when I do that, it looks something like this, where I start with the pencil up there by the ceiling, and then I go down to, I sort of see where the eraser is. Now I put the tip of the pencil where the eraser was. And I can see that from where, I, where I'm sitting, the whole wall is two pencils tall. And if I measure now from, from where the bottom of the wall would be, to where I'm sitting, I end up with a little more than one pencil more. So what that means is that, get rid of that. Um, so here's one, one of my pencils. So remember, I held the pencil up. I had one pencil, two pencils, and three pencils, and a little more. So what I'm saying is that from where I'm sitting, I can see only down to about here. And if you want, you can imagine that my feet are sort of right here if I'm facing that wall. And I'm going to go ahead and crop my drawing at that line. And that's where my drawing is going to end.
Okay, it wouldn't make any sense for me to to draw further down than this because I can't see it. Now, remember I said uh, from where I'm sitting, that wall is about 12 feet away. So this wall is nine. And that means that if I just estimate, I would say nine feet away on the drawing would be to about here. Because this distance here looks to be about three quarters of this overall distance. That's just a rough estimate, but you don't have to be exact on this. The reason 9 is a significant number, though, is because when I create a diagonal through here, it's going to go through 9 orthogonals, and that means it's going to give me 9 horizontal units. And this is the same thing that we did before. Notice that these units stop when they hit the wall. So we don't want to go too far over. So that's 9. And now I'm going to add 3 more. How am I going to do that? Well. Uh, any diagonal with this rule, any diagonal will also work for creating additional horizontals. So I can go through these two corners here and find a new diagonal that takes me down a little further, like that. And then I can create, now I've got 10, now I've got 11 and 12 would actually be a little further down here, but that is fine. So now I've just drawn with correct or close enough to being correct for shortening. I've drawn a 9 by 9 wall and I've drawn a 9 by 12 floor. It's actually easier if your uh, distance from here to where your toes are is the same or shorter than the width of the wall. Okay, This was a little tricky because my wall is so narrow and the room is relatively long. So I had to add on something at the bottom. Um, I could have just stopped my drawing at 9 feet, too. That would have worked. Um, but I want you to try to estimate your foreshortening correctly and try to um, draw the right amount of floor. And once you've done that, it's very, very easy to grid the walls the rest of the way because wherever one of these ends is where the vertical begins. So we just keep the t-square in one place and the only trouble here is going to be that these little tiny triangles are not quite long enough to bring us to the ceiling. However, if unless you have a lot of junk on your ceiling, or I mean a lot of junk on the upper part of your wall. That doesn't really matter. And if you need to, you can extend any of these with a straight edge.
so there's our 12 on that side and now same thing over here Notice that on the walls, just as on the floor, these units are getting bigger and bigger as they get closer to us. So that's the bones of the room, if you will. Now I need to take some measurements of objects in the room. And the first thing I'm going to focus on is my bed. I will show you again. It's got a brass headboard and a brass footboard. And I've measured it, and it is four and a half feet wide. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four and a half along here. And it is seven feet long. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you were paying attention before, you know this is called the footprint of the bed. This is the ground that the bed occupies in this room. That's easy, I hope. Let me zoom in a little bit on the space now. Now the headboard I measured, and the headboard is about five and a quarter feet tall. So that means I go straight up, and I should be between these two. So one, two, three, four, five and a quarter. I'm going to go back to my vanishing point. And the headboard is going to be roughly like that. And the footboard I measured, and that is about three and three quarters. So I'm going to count up along the same spot, one, two, three, and three quarters. And then just carry that across, and I can get my height of my footboard from there. Then I go to my vanishing point again. And I go up. And this is the space that the footboard's going to sit in. Now the middle of the bed, I forgot to measure, so give me a sec. So the middle of the bed is about two and a half feet tall. So that's the top of the mattress. So I'm going to go up two and a half over here. And go straight across. And then I'm going to go to my vanishing point like that. And like that. And that 
was a little wonky, sorry. So this box here represents the main part of the bed. And this represents the headboard and the footboard. Now over in this corner I have a bookcase and it is about a foot deep and it is about a foot and a half wide. It really fills in this little space here. So the footprint of the bookcase is maybe a little more than a foot and it goes almost right into that corner and it's just a little more than a foot deep so that's the footprint of the bookcase right there and the height of the bookcase is So the bookcase is six and a half feet tall. So I gotta count one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So it's to here. And then I'm gonna go straight up to that point. Straight over. And this is the back of the bookcase. And now I'm going to do the side of the bookcase. It's going to be a little taller than the back. And I can find out how tall it is by using the vanishing point and finishing this box. And I can go straight up from here. With my wonky little T-square. And like that. This is going to have shelves in it. But I'm not going to do that yet. And finally, I have a door that starts about two and a half feet from this wall, the closet door. So I'm going to count one, two and a half. And I know it's seven feet tall. So that brings us to here. And it's a very narrow door. So as you can see, I just added a bunch more details to my drawing. Um, the goal here is that the details do not have to be photorealistic, but things that line up horizontal to the floor should be aiming for the vanishing point if they're going away from you, and things that are vertical in real life should be going vertical in your drawing. Those are the two most important things. Um, we're going to do this project in two stages. Uh, for the first stage, I would just like to see you create the space of your room. Um, you'll have a whole week to do that. And the just make some simple boxes to represent your main items of furniture. Simple boxes on the walls to indicate windows and doors, pictures, and so on. 
Um, then, after you've done that and I've assessed it, um, you can sit in that same place in your room and start adding details and shading from direct observation. And if you like to draw, that'll be the fun part. Um, you're just going to add shading, whatever details you want, and uh, really take your time. Um, that You'll have a whole other week to do that. So I know this, this may feel hard to some of you. Um, I am maintaining office hours Monday through Thursday, and I really ask you to check in with me um, and uh, show me what you're working on and I can try to teach you as best I can from here. Um, I think it's possible for you to do this. Uh, we'll find out. Good luck.